Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. This is how we know if they have the Spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist. I mean, all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. Which you heard is coming into the world, and indeed, is already here. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people, because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Those people belong to this world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint, and the world listens to them. But we belong to God, and those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. I usually never read from the New Living Translation, but I liked the way that that was worded, and so I shared that first. I'm going to read you now the New King James Version of the same verse. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets had gone out into the world. Good evening, Mr. Harari. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us tonight. My question indeed is a bit more personal. You've called yourself a prophet tonight, or you, you used the I, word, I you repeatedly used the word denied. Yeah, well, but, uh... <laughs> By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. I mean, all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God, he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us, but this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Some are calling this man Yuval Noah Harari, a prophet. So you must hear what this false prophet says about Jesus. This is the spirit of Antichrist before your eyes. This man claims that there is no plan for humankind. But let me read on. 1 John 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, 
that's the Messiah, Jesus, that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. That's the plan of God for humankind. Whoever confesses that Jesus, Yeshua, is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. That's because he's confessing that Yeshua, who is salvation, has come to redeem us. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. 1 John 2, 16 For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our accomplishments and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Dear children, the last hour is here. Developing even bigger powers than ever before, we are really acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. We are really upgrading humans into gods. We are acquiring, for instance, the, the power to re-engineer life. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. These people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved that they did not belong with us. Imagine in your mind the names of the elites that own some of the top businesses in the world, including a former president that you know. Um, they all recommended this book. So we know what these people are all headed towards, this hacking of the brain and wanting to put the computer in with the brain so that they can create an elevated level of humankind to be the new evolution to create what they say are taking mankind to a new level of being divine gods. Please note, please do not put the names of those people in the comments section. I'm deliberately not saying their names because they will take down comments if they don't like somebody's name to be in there. Every single person in Silicon Valley loved and bought this book. Let's look at something else that they believe. Farming increased the amount of available food, increased the human population, and allowed people to specialize in a wide variety of trades. But he argues it's questionable whether or not it was actually worth it. Having surplus food may have allowed us to create politics, art, and philosophy, but it also led to war and a widening class system. Also, peasants working before our modern era face longer hours and more exposure to disease than our early hunter-gatherer descendants. Harari makes the case that the human species may have been better off as foragers before farming changed everything. 
So consider that philosophy when you think about the fact that suddenly in Kansas over 10,000 cattle suddenly perished and were laying there in rows because they are paying farmers not to farm. Now you know why this is their philosophy about the food factories being burned to the ground because this is their philosophy. To quote his video, also we see a change in the nature of surveillance. Previously surveillance was mainly above us, above the skin. Harari says, now it's going under the skin. Governments want to know not just where we go or who we meet. Above all, they want to know what is happening under our skin. And we also see a change in the nature of surveillance. Previously, surveillance was mainly above the skin. Now it's going under the skin. He says that the world will look back on the 2020 events, if you know what I mean, read between the lines, as the time when everything changed to create what they're hoping will be their utopia. Quote, we are upgrading humans into gods, end quote. Humans are not just hackable animals, as he says. Humans are now hackable animals. We are made in the image of God. Male and female were made in the image of God, according to Genesis in the beginning. The scary thing is, is that this man is not only the top bookseller in Israel, but now he has written a four-part series of books for children to brainwash them into this new way of thinking. He has denied God, he has denied the Savior of the world, and blasphemed his name. Let me quote Psalm 53, verse 1. The folly of the godless and the restoration of Israel. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. He says this, there are no gods in the universe, no nations, no money, no human rights, no laws, no justice outside the common imagination of human beings. They are corrupt and have done abominable iniquity. There is none who does good. God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any that understand who seek God. Every one of them has turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread? And having his book be the number one selling book in Israel is shocking. And do not call upon God. There they are in great fear where no fear it was, for God has scattered the bones of him who encamps against you. You have put them to shame because God has despised them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When God brings back that captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Psalm 14, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. Psalm 10, verse 3. For the wicked boasts of his heart's desire. He blesses the greedy and renounces the Lord. The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. His ways are always prospering. Your judgments are far above, out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he sneers at them, and he has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue is trouble and iniquity. He sits in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places. He murders the innocent. His eyes are secretly fixed on the helpless. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. 
He lies in wait to catch the poor. He catches the poor when he draws him into his net. So he crouches, he lies low, that the helpless may fall by his strength. He has said in his heart, God is forgiven. He hides his face. He will never see. Proverbs 28, 11. Rich people may think they are wise, but a poor person with discernment can see right through them. Romans 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God, which is coming in the tribulation, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse because although they knew God. They did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Second Peter 2, verse 1. But there were also false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you, they will cleverly teach destructive heresies. All this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. And even deny the master who bought them. In this way, they will bring sudden destruction on themselves. And of course, these people are calling him a prophet and he does live in Israel and teaches at the Hebrew University and is extremely popular among the elites, including being an advisor to Klaus Schwab, of course, as we've already talked about in the past. And this happened before in Israel, somebody coming out of there lying about the Lord. In Jeremiah, Jeremiah the prophet spoke about this in chapter 5, verse 12. They have lied about the Lord and said, it is not he, neither will evil come upon us, nor shall we see sword or famine, and the prophets become wind, for the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done to them. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire, and this people would and it shall devour them. Behold, I will bring a nation against you from afar, O house of Israel, says the Lord. It is a mighty nation, it's an ancient nation, a nation whose language you do not know, nor can you understand what they say. Their quiver is like an open tomb, they are all mighty men, and they shall eat up your harvest and your bread, which your sons and daughters should eat. They should eat up your flocks and herds, they shall eat up your vines and your fig trees, they shall destroy your fortified cities in which you trust with the sword. Nevertheless, in those days, says the Lord, I will not make a complete end of you. 
And it will be when you say, Why does the Lord our God do these things to us? Then you shall answer them, Just as you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your land, so you shall serve aliens in a land that is not yours. Declare this in the house of Jacob and proclaim it in Judah, saying, Hear this now, O foolish people, without understanding, who have eyes and see not, and who have ears and hear not. Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Will you not tremble at my presence, who have placed the sand as the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass beyond it? And though its waves toss to and fro, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, they cannot pass over it. But this people has a defiant and rebellious heart. They have revolted and departed. They do not say in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, who gives us rain, both the former and the latter in its season. He reserves for us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned these things away, and your sins have withheld good from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lie in wait as one who sets snares. They set a trap. They catch men as a cage is full of birds. So their houses are full of deceit. Therefore, they have become great and grown rich. They have grown fat and they are sleek. Yes, they surpass the deeds of the wicked. They do not plead the cause, the cause of the fatherless. Yet they prosper, and the right of the needy they do not defend. Shall I not punish them for these things, saith the Lord? Shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? An astonishing and horrible thing has been committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule by their own power. And my people love to have it so. But what will you do in the end? Jeremiah warned about false prophets coming out of the land of Israel. So you've called yourself a prophet tonight, or you, you used the I, word, I you repeatedly the word deny yeah, well. that. Uh... These people that are elites are praising this man and referring to him as a prophet. Because they plan to do miraculous signs and wonders with technology to implant computer parts into the human to try to turn them into some sort of gods, which mankind will never be that. We were created in the image of God and we are children of God, nothing more. It's a pleasure to be here also not only to visit uh, Rani Noriel, but uh, also to be in, in Silicon Valley, which for me is a kind of special place as a historian. As a historian, I focus mainly on the history of uh, ideas, ideology, mythology, religion. And I think that the most interesting place in the world today, in religious terms, is Silicon Valley. Uh, not the Middle East, not Syria or Afghanistan or Israel or Jerusalem, but Silicon Valley. This is where the new religions that will take over the world are being formulated. And uh, uh, this will also be the topic of my uh, talk uh, for the next hour or so. Jeremiah 6, verse 17. Also I set a watchman over you, saying, Listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not listen. Therefore, hear, you nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will certainly bring calamity on this people, the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not heeded my words, nor my law, but rejected it. For what purpose to me comes frankincense from Sheba and sweet cane from a far country? Your bird offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifice is sweet to me. Therefore, this is the Lord. 
Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall on them, and the neighbor and his friend shall perish. Thus says the Lord, Behold, a people comes from the north country, and a great nation will be raised from the farthest parts of the earth, and they will lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roars like the sea, and they ride on horses as men of war set in array against you, O daughter of Zion. We have heard the report of it. Our hands grow feeble. Anguish has taken hold of us, pain as of a woman in labor. Do not go out into the field nor walk by the way because of the sword of the enemy. Fear is on every side. O daughter of my people, dress in sackcloth and roll about in ashes. Make mourning as for an only son. Most bitter lamentation, for the plunderer will suddenly come upon us. I have set you as an assayer and a fortress among my people that you may know and test their way. They are all stubborn rebels walking as slanderers. They are bronze and iron, and they are all corruptors. The bellows blow fiercely. The lead is consumed by the fire. The smelter refines in vain, for the wicked are not drawn off. People will call them rejected silver because the Lord has rejected them. Because their transgressions are many, their backslidings have increased. How shall I pardon you for this? Your children have forsaken me and sworn by those that are not gods. When I had fed them to the full, then they committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. They were like well-fed, lusty stallions, every one neighed after his neighbor's wife. Shall I not punish them for these things, said the Lord, and shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? You cannot have a false prophet. You cannot have somebody speaking lies about the Lord coming out of Israel of all places. The Holy Land, the place where God said his name was going to dwell forever. You cannot say these things about Jesus, about God, and not see that the wrath of God is coming upon all who speak falsely and lies about God. This is setting up for the time of Jacob's trouble. A time that's going to be like no other time in the history of the world. This is the time of the coming tribulation, the great tribulation, because the Lord is coming with his wrath against all such ungodliness of men who say such abominable lies about the Holy Spirit of God, about God, about his Son. Jesus Christ of Nazareth and say with all audacity that Jesus death burial and resurrection is fake news what a blasphemy from the mouth of this false silicon prophet all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God this is fake news am I ticked off by it I am because it offends me these people offend my king the one that paid the bride's price with his death burial and resurrection and they trample the blood of Christ under their feet as though it's nothing Hebrews 10 29 says this how much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace. New Living Translation says this about that. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. And here's another warning in Hebrews 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after we've received the knowledge of the truth, 
There no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people, and it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Do you think that by these statements that God is not insulted and the Antichrist spirit has been revealed and the false prophet of future technologies to try to turn human beings into an evolution of some sort of humanoid God. Do you think God's insulted? Hebrews 10, 39, But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. 2 John 1, 7, For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. And with all the rich men following after him, we know that it's easier for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle than it is to enter the kingdom of God. Don't you know that this spirit of Antichrist and spirit of false prophets coming out of the land of Israel with the elites joining in and loving everything he does and praising him as a prophet, don't you think this is going to collide with the religious people who follow the law of God and his covenants, the people wanting to build the third temple in Jerusalem? This whole thing is going to collide in the time of Jacob's trouble. And mystery Babylon is coming this time not just Babylon the Lord is coming his wrath is coming with him he's not coming as a lamb he's coming as a lion and the lion is about ready to roar repent turn from your wicked ways believe in the salvation that God sent the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is God's salvation, the second perfect Adam, who was without sin to reverse the curse of Adam and Eve after they fell and they were the, in the state of death. The Messiah came and died to reverse that and was resurrected on the third day to bring us eternal life and restore God's spirit to us through a cleansed, pure heart by believing in his covenant and believing in his blood atonement for our sins. We are saved when our heart is changed and turned towards God. If people continue to follow this path, sudden destruction is coming. And we know it's going to happen because these people are going to refuse to repent and change their ways. It's already in prophecy. It's going to happen. And there's nothing we can do about it. The wicked will perish and the righteous will be saved. And that's just the way it's going to be. I hope you listen to what I'm saying because these things are a warning. And Jeremiah the prophet warned already about what was coming out of Israel at that time. And now it's happening again where somebody is saying diabolical things about God coming out of Israel, the Holy Land. And God is insulted that the Messiah was trampled under his feet in that statement about his death, burial, and resurrection being fake news. 
Who would say such a blasphemous thing? Well, anyway, I am on a rant about it just because I love the Lord and these people are going to continue to be wicked because that's what they are. They don't have a conscience when they have no Holy Spirit in them teaching them right and wrong. And they elevate themselves to positions of grandeur. That's what the whole New Worthless Order is all about, after all, isn't it? Is elevating themselves. I would say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Lord is coming and his judgment is coming with him. One final word from Jude 1 verse 5. But I want to remind you though that you once knew this that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed those who did not believe and the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh are set forth as an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh reject authority and speak evil of dignitaries yet michael the archangel in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of moses dared not bring against him a reviling accusation skipping to verse 17 but you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. Now he said that these end-time religions that they're going to create through tech and the AI are going to cause divisions with the religious world. And he's just saying right here, these are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And I'll end with this, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed Psalm 37, do not fret because of evil doers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. 
Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Jeremiah 6.10 To whom can I give warning? Who will listen when I speak? Their ears are closed, and they cannot hear. They scorn the word of the Lord. They don't want to listen at all. Jesus said the words, Yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Who would ever guess in a million years that somebody would be out there coming from Israel, speaking like this, and saying these blasphemous things against God, against Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we know that we love him with all of our hearts. And these things not only offend the king, but they offend his servants and best friends too. And that's what we are to our Savior, our Good Shepherd. And I'll say good night for now. And remember, we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, taken out of the hands of the enemy and placed in the hands of God forever. I'm heading off to heaven, could be morning, night, or noon. I'm heading up to heaven, and I'm hoping it's soon. Gonna see the wicked perish, they're gonna get their day. When we're going up in the glory cloud That Jesus is coming to take us away We're going up to heaven Cause I'm heaven bound I don't need this earth no more Cause I hate the evil I've seen around Heading up to heaven When Jesus comes down and I'm going to spend my eternity with the King of Glory. Because I'm heading up to heaven. Don't you want to go with me? Oh yeah, Jesus, our beautiful Savior. He's coming to get us. And we'll be seeing His glory. Hallelujah, we're heading to heaven. Amen. I couldn't help but sing a song for you at the end. Give you a little bit of joy and hope. Good night.